Hey guys, it's Britt. We're here at Epcot today to try some snacks around the World Showcase. So today I think I'm gonna focus on trying to find savory snacks in every country. So let's head on in and chow down. So usually a good indication to see how busy Epcot is, is to see the wait time for Spaceship Earth when you walk in. 25 minutes at one o'clock on a Sunday. That's nothing, this park's pretty dead. So today at the World Showcase, I'm gonna try and find a savory snack in every country. There are 11 countries total, and we're gonna go ahead and start in Canada first. Now my parameters for the snacks are, number one, it needs to be at a kiosk or a quick service location that is permanent in Epcot. Right now, there is the Flower and Garden Festival going on, so there's a lot of little stands throughout the park with little different snacks to try. I don't wanna do that, I don't wanna focus on those. I wanna focus on things you can get all the time here. And I wanna focus on things that you can't get anywhere else. So I wanna focus on snacks that are specific to not only Epcot, but that particular country. So let's see what we can find. After you've reached the end of the World Case Bridge, you're going to take a right and that'll take you to Canada. Which is the first stop on our snack tour. Here we are in Canada. We are going to take a look at Refreshment Port and see if we can find our Canadian savory snack here. And here is the menu. I went ahead and ordered the beef biscuit poutine. For the poutine alone, it was $9.58. Cheers. That's good. The beef has a really moist flavor to it, as if it's covered in gravy. It's good. The cheese is a beer cheese, so it's not that plasticky cheese that sometimes you get. It's good. Definitely messy. Definitely something you need to eat with a fork because it, it is falling apart already. But overall, pretty good. And it's hot. It's very hot, so it's definitely fresh. The one thing I will say is that the french fries aren't overly spectacular. They're just standard Disney french fries, so they didn't go out of their way to make some different types of fries. But otherwise, this is very good. I would order this again. This is really tasty. Throughout Epcot, they have these standing tables to eat at. You'll see a lot of them out when it's festival time, like during food and wine or flower and garden. Today, I had absolutely no problem finding a table. There are plenty of open ones, as you can even see behind me. But when the festival is busy, it gets crazy. You will not be able to find a table. And if you find a table, chances are you will be sharing that table because it gets nuts. Whenever it's busy in here, you almost have to fight for your life to get a table. And here we are in the UK. Am I the only one that takes a look at that food Toby area and automatically thinks of it? Has he been making friends with Pennywise? I don't know, it's all I think about every time I see it. That darn red balloon. We are gonna visit Yorkshire County Fish Shop and see if we can find our next snack. Hmm. I am being very liberal here as to what counts for a snack. But to be perfectly honest, the UK doesn't have a lot of quick service locations or even little stands to buy snacks. This is pretty much their only quick service stop. So we're gonna consider their fish and chips a snack. Cause really if you share it amongst two or three people, it is a snack. And here is the menu. So I went ahead and ordered the chicken and mushroom pasty. This was not listed on the menu, and I just randomly found it up at the counter, so I was like, I've gotta try that. And the pasty with fries was 1060. So let's go ahead and see how this tastes. So that was just a bite of mushrooms. They're all right. They have a weird aftertaste. Um, I will be honest, I don't eat a lot of mushrooms. It was definitely a different flavor to me some of the chicken and the mushrooms and the pie together. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this. It's all right. 
Like I think if you're used to chicken and mushroom flavors together, you would enjoy this. It's not a flavor palette I tend to eat a lot. I don't like it. Let's go ahead and try one of these chips because I clearly did not get enough french fries with the poutine. So right off the bat, they excite me because they're not the traditional Disney french fries. They are a little bit thicker. Mm, they're well, they're well seasoned. These are good. A part of me wishes I went with the fish and chips because Yorkshire is well known for their fish and chips. Um, but I wanted to go for something different, something I haven't seen on a lot of different menus. And you can get fish and chips at a couple different locations in Walt Disney World. However, I've never seen chicken mushroom pasties on the menu anywhere else. But yeah, this is probably a snack I wouldn't get again. I would get these fries again though. Fries are good. So because I couldn't find a table in the UK, I went to our next country to eat. Wrong. So this is the French Pavilion. But now we are going to a little itty bitty quick service location called Layout. And here we are. Now when you first walk in, it looks like a shop, but if you keep walking to the back, you'll find food. And as you can tell, it's one of the more popular locations. It's one of the half. So I went ahead and got a Raoul, which is pretty much a bacon and cheese roll. How can you beat that? So it's very hot. I had him toast it, so it warmed it up a bit. They do ask you when you're in line if you'd like it toasted. Ooh, but it's really hot. Cheers. The bread definitely has that bacon flavor. You can definitely tell it's that same cheese that they put on top of a um, French onion, that Gautier or whatever it's called. That's the type of cheese that's on there. Yeah, overall, I think this is all right. I think this would make a decent breakfast item. That's it. It wasn't bad in price though. Including tax, it was only $4.21. So it was one of the cheaper items we've gotten. Actually, it's the cheapest item we've gotten today. So that's good to know. But it's all right. Something to brag home about. So, so far, I've only finished one snack, and that was the snack from Canada, that beef poutine. The other two I've eaten pieces of and then either thrown away or stored it for later. But even only having eaten one snack, I'm starting to get super full. So I have a feeling that this vlog is going to be a two-parter. But let's see how many more countries we can hit before I get absolutely stuffed. And here we are in Morocco. I could not find any quick service location that served savory snacks in Morocco. Instead, I'm going to try one of the flower and garden booths. And here is the menu. So I went ahead and ordered the fried cauliflower which came out to be a total of $6. The cast member running the booth said the fried cauliflower was absolutely delicious and that if you like the fried cauliflower, you will like everything in Morocco. That's some pretty high standards. So I think I need to dive in to see if I would like most of the items in Morocco. So right off the bat, these definitely look more like sweet potatoes than cauliflower, which is kind of cool. Um, it kind of smells like a mayonnaise almost because of the sauce. Let's see how this goes. Hmm. There's heat to that. Hmm. Wow. That has some heat. Yeah, there's something in the coating that makes it spicy. Like I think the flavors are good. The 
flavors are there. It's fried without tasting too greasy. Or it's a vegetable without tasting like a vegetable. But it's hot. <laughs> it's really spicy. So once again, this is another snack that I was unable to finish. Um, I am getting super full. Like I feel really stuffed right now. Um, but I want to try to get at least halfway through the country. This is the first thing I've ever tried in Morocco. So it's been an interesting experience. I'm always scared to try food in Morocco because it's so different to the stuff I usually eat. I don't regret trying it, but it wasn't my favorite. Canada's still winning. Who would have thought Canada would win at anything? Onward and upward to Japan. My enemy after all these decks. So next snack on the menu is spicy tuna and spicy salmon rolls. With tax, this was $9.59. This is called the Katsura Grill, which is a quick service restaurant inside of Japan. I'm gonna be very honest, it's nice and quiet here. There's some very serene music and it's just really pretty here. It's really pretty here. So this is a nice little spot to, to eat lunch if you're here. Or in my case, a snack that's actually lunch. And please forgive my lack of chopstick skills. It's not developed. Here it is. They gave me this sushi in a package, so it makes me think that it is not made on site. And to be honest, it doesn't taste like it's made on site. It's very dry. It does have a little bit of a heat to it. It doesn't have as much of a heat as the fried cauliflower did. But it, it, it's definitely stronger as an after effect. The heat is definitely stronger as an aftertaste as compared to when you actually eat it. This is all right. I don't think I'll end up finishing this snack. It's just absolutely gorgeous back here. So today was a high caloric gut building day. We went around the world and tried a bunch of different snacks. To be perfectly honest, I did find a little bit of a complication when trying to find snacks. While there were really a ton of sugary snacks, savory snacks were a lot more complicated to find. There weren't really that many. So most of the snacks I had to go with were actual meals, which I found up to be a little bit of a detriment. It was a little bit of a downer for people who prefer savory over sweet. So that's something to consider if you're trying to find a saltier snack here. One suggestion I do have is to go into the shops in the World Pavilion. In each country, they do have snacks, packaged snacks from around the globe. So for instance, if you go into the UK, you'll find packaged snacks from Great Britain. So that might be the best way to find savory snacks. However, I really wanted to try real food that was prepared that day, hopefully. Um, but I want to see snacks like that. So you could definitely try the pre-packaged route if you're looking for savory. But just to let you know, if you are on the hunt for savory snacks in Epcot, they are a challenge to find. I definitely couldn't get through all the countries today, so we'll have to do a part two. I think I'll start in Mexico and go all the way up to the US of A. I think that'll be the goal for our next Epcot vlog. You guys like seeing all the different snacks that Epcot has to offer? Leave a comment down below and tell me if there's a certain snack that you think I should try next time or a certain snack that you'd like to see me try. For those of you who have watched some, this video and some of my previous videos, thank you very much. And thank you to those who have subscribed. If you liked this video, please subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This is Britt, ending today's chapter.